I'm fascinated with time lapse because it gives you a new perspective of viewing your city, a new way of looking at things. You rarely ever see clouds move, but with time lapse, you can see that. You can see the stars move. You can see the rapid movement of a busy city. And that really fascinated me. And I started, you know, I, I really got obsessed with it like four years ago. I just started, my friend showed me a, a time lapse video. He does time lapse. His name is Kuri from Egypt. And, uh, you know, I just became obsessed. He told me, you know, he, no one has ever done a time lapse of the city of Cairo. And that pushed me. You know, I came back to Tampa, did my first time lapse film, Tampa Lapse One. And when I went back to Egypt for the summer, I, you know, I pushed myself to be the first, first one to do a time lapse of Cairo. And uh, people really appreciated it. You know, people loved, people loved it because they've never seen the city in that light. The most essential thing is a tripod because you need to get a, a steady shot. The camera can't move during a time lapse unless you're doing a hyperlapse, which is something else. The second thing you need is obviously a camera. And honestly, you don't need a fancy camera. You don't need, you know, an, uh, an expensive camera because. As long as you can shoot raw, you can really bring out the, the colors, you know, because you shoot raw, you can export in 4K, you know, the pictures come out in 4K, big, higher than 4K. The last thing you need is an intervalometer. The intervalometer, it's, it's, it's a tool that allows the camera to take pictures, to take pictures at a set interval. So it takes a picture every five seconds automatically. So you don't need to be there pressing the button. That's, a lot, that's what a lot of people think I do. They think like I sit, sit behind the camera and just press the button every five seconds. No, there's a, there's, a, there's a tool for that. And the last thing you need is earbuds. I always take earbuds with me because you're out on the field for a long time, maybe 10 minutes or maybe two hours. So you gotta keep your mind distracted with music, podcasts, audiobooks, whatever you want. You know? I'll say there's like three stages to doing time lapses. So there's the first stage is pre-planning, which is like uh, location scouting. So every time I want to shoot at a location, I'll go there the day before, plan it out, make sure, you know, even go on Google Maps and see if, where I could stand, you know, if I can get on top of a garage and get this shot. Second thing is shooting, so going out on the field and actually doing the time lapse. And then third thing is editing, take all the footage back, you know, drag it on the computer and convert it into a video file. I guess the challenge, the biggest challenge is finding the best shot. Is trying to find the perfect, you know, because some places, you know, it's restricted, you're not allowed to film there. So really, location scouting is an important step. And it's a challenge, because you got to find the perfect spot to take the picture. Right now I'm doing, uh, my latest project is Tampa Lapse 2. I made Tampa Lapse 1 four years ago, so this is my, you know, this is the second version. Tampa Lapse 1 was actually my first time lapse project. And this will be my third. And it's covering all of Tampa. Ybor City, downtown, Tampa Theater, the historic places. You know, with Tampa Lapse 1, I couldn't get into these locations because you need a permit. So this one, I really stepped it up and I uh, talked to the film commissioner and I you know, told him I want to get into Tampa Theater and I want to get into Trolley. Can you get me in these locations? I want to get on this rooftop. Then. So I'm really pushing myself to, you know, really expose Tampa and what it has to offer.